everyone. Hello, my name is Eileen Wong and I am a curator here at the Beach Museum of Art, Mariana Kistler Beach Museum of Art. And tonight our program is part of the Let's Talk Art series and we will be talking about murals in Manhattan. So before we begin the program, I'd like to acknowledge that Kansas State University as the first land grant land grant institution established under the 1862 Morrill Act stands on the treaty lands of the Ka Nation. There are four federally recognized tribes in Kansas, the Kickapoo, Prairie Band Potawatomi, Sac and Fox, and the Iowa tribe of Kansas and Nebraska. Many native nations utilize the Western Plains of Kansas as their hunting grounds and others such as the Delaware were moved through this region during Indian removal efforts to make way for white settlers. It's important to acknowledge this since the land that serves as the foundation for this institution was and still is stolen land. A note on accessibility. Um, there might be some people in the audience tonight who are primarily listening to this program and not using video. So whenever possible, I will briefly describe what's on the screen throughout the program. Closed captioning is available. Click on the CC icon to activate it. That should be at the bottom of the Zoom screen if you're on a desktop or laptop or um, at the top of the screen if you're using an iPad or your phone. This program is being recorded and a transcript will be available when the recording is posted on the museum's YouTube channel. And speaking of the museum's YouTube channel, if you are not yet a subscriber, please subscribe to our channel. Help us reach 100 subscribers so that we can get a custom, easy to remember URL. We're almost there. Um, at the end of the program, we will open up the forum to audience members to talk directly with our guest speakers and to ask questions. So there are two ways you can do that. If you'd like to speak directly, you can click on the icon, raise your hand, or you could also write a question in the chat box. So Jen and I will be monitoring those to make sure we get um, everybody's questions. Um, and depending on time, we may not get to all of it. So please forgive us. And I would like to say special thank you to our um, events coordinator, Jennifer Harlan, who is behind the scenes making sure that everything runs smoothly. Okay, so um, I would like to describe myself first. I am a woman of Chinese descent. I have straight, medium length, dark brown hair, and I am wearing a short sleeve or sleeveless crew neck black top and the necklace and earrings. We have two guests tonight. The first is Jessica Tegatoff, one of the members of Insight MHK, an organization founded here in Manhattan about two years ago, which aims to increase public art in Manhattan. Jessica is a co-owner of Locked, the escape room experience located in downtown Manhattan. So go check it out. Um, Jessica, would you please provide a short description of yourself for our audience? Yes, Eileen. So my name is Jessica Tegadoff. I uh, am part of Insight Image K. I have red hair that's pretty long. And today I'm wearing a yellow shirt and I'm sitting in my loft, uh, which I kind of use as a good reason to collect books behind me. You can see some of my favorites. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's one of my favorite places to hang out. Thank you, Jessica. So um, Jen, if we could show the first slide um, I'd like to show the audience some pictures of past Insight MHK uh, projects. And Jessica, if you could just say a sentence about each of them as we show. So the first one that you're seeing right now is from an artist, a uh, Brazilian artist duo called Bicicletas and Frio. This is our first project that we did. So we hired uh, Just Kids to help coordinate this project for us. Um, and they all came in in a team and put this up in a matter of a week. So it was a pretty quick project uh, kind of building up to it. It was a lot of excitement and choosing the artist, narrowing it down. And you can find this on the wall of AJ's downtown. 
Okay, next slide, please. This is called Rise and Shine, and this is from a local artist. His name is Colin Williamson. Uh, he did a series for us, and this is one of a series that we hope to complete. Uh, you'll find this one downtown uh, by the courthouse. It's on a private structure. It's very well hidden. We actually did kind of a prompt on social media to see who could find it. So that's out there. So if you're looking for this one, uh, look by the courthouse is kind of what we're direct, where we're directing people. Um, but yeah, Colin super uh, talented digital artist and he was able to do this for us. So hopefully we can find some more walls for more of his projects. Next slide, please. So you can see a little bit of Nick's Kitty Castle there, but right next to it, uh, right before Nick came in, we had JT Daniels come in. This alleyway is kind of catty corner from the chef. It's on up of fourth street. Uh, this one is called Sup and uh, one of the first, actually the second in that alleyway that we, so we did RBG kind of right next to this one, but JT is from Kansas City and he came to do this for us um, pretty recently. So you can kind of find a series in this alleyway. So next slide, you'll see JT's mural. Yeah. And then go to the next slide, you can show the RGB mural. Yeah, so this one's done by Taylor Carr, another local artist. Um, just right after RPG passed, we just kind of wanted to dedicate something to her. So you can find this right next to JT's. And then next slide, please. <laughs> so on the left <laughs> is Jeff uh, talking to Nick. I don't know what they're discussing. Probably breakfast food, to be honest. But uh, well, so yeah. I wanted to show this. I took this picture actually because okay. I was there on the first day. So I, I, I wanted to document that empty wall, you know, before yeah. Nick started. <laughs> it looks very blank. So, <laughs> and on the left is Jeff Sackrider, who is another member of Inside MHK. So, uh, next, I'm going to introduce our artist uh, featured today. His name is Nick Fisher, artist named Sick Fisher. And he's been creating murals throughout the country for the past 10 years or so after graduating with a fine art degree from Florida State University. Nick, would you describe yourself briefly to our listeners? Yes. Uh, hi, my name's Nick Fisher. I am a 35 year old white male with curly brown hair. Uh, my mom says that my mom's side is Russian English, and I think my dad's side is Pennsylvania Dutch. So I think that covers my heritage. Thank you. Um, I see a quick question. Where is the RBG mural located? Jessica, you want to answer that? Yeah, it's actually located in the same alley as the Kitty Castle and JP mural. So there's kind of a series there, uh, one right after the other. So if you visit that alleyway off of 4th Street, catty corner from uh, the chef you're going to find all three situated there and i see i see a raised i saw a raised hand earlier so we will save um audience questions you know more interactive questions at the end of the session um so we'll just um run through uh talking to jessica and nick about their work first so jessica i'd like to uh, start with a question about inside mhk um, first of all, what would you like people to know about Inside MHK? Oh, man. Uh, so we are kind of dedicated to bringing a lot of big art platforms to Manhattan. So, I mean, I think I would just like a lot of uh, just getting in front of them. That's, that's one thing. We're kind of recent and we're a small group as well. Uh, but we work pretty quickly, we like to think, and we're learning every project. So uh, we want to know about any walls that you want to fill up and want to know about any artists that you really like. Uh, we're kind of mobile in that way that we, uh, you know, do a lot of different projects. So that was one thing that we really wanted to navigate around was um, being able to do stuff quickly and on private property so that we could get it done. Great. Um, and then... Is there a future project that Inside MHK is doing that you can talk about? Like, okay, we just finished Kitty <laughs> Castle. So what's in the horizon? We do have a couple of projects uh, in the works right now, but we are not disclosing any information on it. Um, our website will always keep uh, you up to date. There is a donate button there. So if you wanted to contribute to any of our future projects, we will kind of list some teasers there. Our social media will have them as well. So if you like us on Facebook and on Instagram, we're always going to have 
at least teasers. We did kind of lead to Nick's information there. Um, and we're always available for you know any suggestions as well. But as of right now, I can't share anything. <laughs> uh, okay, we will uh, be on the lookout. Yeah, follow Inside MHK on Facebook and Instagram, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Jen, uh, could we go back to the slide and go to the next? Where did our presentation go? Can we get our images back? Hey, Jen. Uh oh. Okay. Well, um, while Jen is trying to get the images back online, um, you guys saw a glimpse of Kitty Castle. Uh, Nick, can you, what would you want people to know about Kitty Castle? Huh. Well, um, there'd be a lot, I suppose. Well, the, the basic gist of Kitty Castle was art for art's sake. The, it kind of went side by side with MA, uh, Insights um, MO, which was to get art to Manhattan without much of an agenda other than just to put some artwork up. So. Uh, when I was contacted or we sat, kind of started talking, I wanted to find something that would go up um, in the town that fit but wasn't Kansas centric. That wasn't, you know, uh, didn't, like I said, it was really just to kind of make people smile. And most people like cats. And um, so that's kind of how we ended up on that. It could have been a dog, but dogs don't play on castles. and. So it was a kitty castle instead. I think, um, did I remember correctly that you also mentioned to me that you thought a cat theme would be good because of the K-State wildcat? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So even though this was, like I said, art for art's sake, it's always good to have, uh, you gotta know your audience, you know, let's put it that way. So it, it helped to, um, it facilitated getting the mural done in the first place when we, when the building owner, you know, found out that there would at least be a little bit of Manhattan in there. And so that's kind of a big part of, of the mural process in the first place is everyone's got to be happy. There's usually a client, you know, very rarely is the muralist painting on their own wall. So mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta please the wall owner and then you gotta please the people who are going to look at it. Um, for the most part, you know, this wasn't like a La Guernica or a political mural. So it was really supposed to make people happy, not make people think too hard. So yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the cat thing came in. One, I like cats too, the wild cats. Before you know it, we had a kitty castle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jen, would you be able to show uh, some of the, the rest of the slides? I, I'm not seeing it on my screen. Is anybody else? Oh, there we, there we go. go. Perfect. Thank you, Jen. So yeah, we'll start with this one and then you can advance to the next. So I love this one. I took this one. <laughs> Nick, you want to talk about <laughs> Well, I, I, what it looks like here is I am showing Jeff my digital sketch of the kitty castle that is about to be put up on the wall. Yeah. Um, so I often use either my phone or my iPad or get a printout of that day's particular sketch just so I can start mapping things out. So you'll see behind me is the primed wall that used to be a, a blank brick wall and now it's primed. And so I am about to start putting on the major compositional blocks where, where the platforms are, where the columns are, where the cat will be, stuff like that. So I'm showing Jeff my sketch that I use from the technical end to, to put it up on the wall and you yeah. photographed it, yeah. And I remember when I took this, I, you know, you were, you were telling me like, okay, you cannot put this on social media until <laughs> I, I get the mural up on the wall. So I had to right, like right. hold off for a few days. Yeah, you know, that's funny. That was just, I was being a little uh, little neurotic. You know, it really is not a big no, deal. No, I understand. It's one of those things that uh, I wouldn't have minded to have a little more of a a reveal. I wanted people to be surprised that it was a kitty castle halfway done, as opposed to me saying, 
oh, it's going to be a kitty castle and get sideways looks on day one. I figured mm-hmm. I'd wait a couple of days before they started looking at me weird. <laughs> yeah. so. um, and also, Nick, do you want to tell people the story of how you named the cat? And actually, could we advance to the next slide? So there's, a, well, I'll show a few. So here you are painting the mural. And Jen, can you go on to the next? There's part of Kitty Castle. <laughs> and uh, next one, please. This is actually you doing the final touch. And I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that is the last, I think that is actually the final touches right there. I'm literally touching the cat. I'm not even painting. I'm physically putting my final touch on it. I think yeah. that's the last time I touched that cat. So yeah, that, that's about it. I think that's the last stroke up there. So Nick, do you want, would you be willing to share the story of the name you gave the cat? You know, that's really funny that you're bringing that up because I'm just now remembering. Did we name it Catherine? Yes. Okay. I think it had something to do with Catherine the Great, yes. who was the queen of... She was Russian, right. but she was the queen. I can't remember exactly how, but it made sense at the time. I remember that. Um, well, yeah, we, we kind of put our heads together <laughs> and, and we decided Catherine the Great. <laughs> right. And, but there was something to do with the Medici family and stuff like yeah. that. It was all this stuff. Yeah. It, it made so, sense. Catherine the Great, you know, married the, the Tsar of Russia. So and she became was. like a powerful ruler of Russia. And uh, she's a very important, pa- you know, art patron for her. Uh-huh. That's yeah. right. And this is her castle. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's to- See? Yeah. They're all coming back to me. Yeah. So, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep. Glad we did um, that. <laughs> okay. Nick, uh, now you've done Kitty Castle and where are you now? Uh, I'm in Chicago right now. Um, I, I have spent a great deal of time in Chicago over the last 10 years. And uh, it's hard to say I don't still live here. I do. I kind of officially live in Los Angeles where my car registration and all that stuff is. But I spend a lot of time out of Los Angeles. And right now I'm in Chicago working and, and, and living. So um, I am in... I'm on the first floor of the apartment building that I stay in still that I've stayed in the last eight years or so. And um, the resale shop owner now lives in my apartment who I stay with when I'm in Chicago. So I'm in that resale shop right now because of all the, the stuff. It looks good in the background. So that's, that's, so I'm sitting behind the counter at a thrift store right now. And uh, Jen, actually, I'm sorry. Can you go back to our presentation? Cause um, I'd like to show our audience some of Nick's um, works in Chicago. So if you go to the next, there. Nick, can you just say one sentence about each as we go through the slides? Oh yeah, this painting is on my friend's record store. It's a giant dollar bill on fire. And instead of a president's head, it's their dog, which is a corgi. (laughs) And I see your artist's name there too. On the on the corner. Yeah, and I and I sign my name in the uh, somewhere. Usually, um, I try and be as creative as I can with where I put my name. But right now, it's kind of signed in uh, smoke and ash. That's right below the bottom right burning corner of a giant banknote. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, called the Zoom Room. Someone approached me about painting their study where they do Zoom meetings um, and one side would be one backdrop and another side would be another backdrop so that during a Zoom meeting, he could pick uh, one or the other. Um, And this picture actually is pretty, really shows the whole thing. But the idea is that when this guy is on a Zoom meeting, you just have a nice backdrop, kind of like any set decoration or anything like that. But yeah, this is called the Zoom room. And and basically you can choose uh, different backdrops. One backdrop is like, a landscape, you know, city in the distance with a sunrise. And then the other wall has like, uh, like he's indoors in a window, you know, showing yeah, yeah. Uh, so rolling he, hills in the back. Specifically, he had asked for a, a skyline of Manhattan. So if you were to zoom in on the cityscape, that is a picture of Manhattan with the Freedom Tower glowing beacon. And then ah. the other side, he said uh, golf. And so I've given him a uh, my version of a golf scene, which I thought was appropriate for him to be inside a building 
with golf outside yeah um as opposed to him on the golf course mm -hmm. so that was that was yeah just sort of my idea there that's really fun next slide please this is um on chicago avenue in chicago um this design really was to kind of melt in with the neighborhood itself so i used um kind of some old chicago architectural themes however this business is a nashville hot chicken sandwich place so it's it, its colors are red black and white which is why i picked those colors but um the design was meant to fit the neighborhood more than it was to fit chicken sandwiches yeah i i love the the way the illusion of the facade on this one Thank so, you. Yeah, it's a very flat building. So a lot of the uh, architectural yeah. elements were added by paint. Yeah. And so it's, it's really amazing, like what you can do, you know, with a flat, boring surface through painting. It, it's a, it is amazing. Yeah. Through, uh, through shading and stuff. So like you'll see that a lot of the edges, if not all my edges are hurt. They end in black. Always the, the final edge of every object and item is ends in black and that creates a lot of uh, it pops uh a lot so it, it often gives a very kind of unreal quality to flat surfaces mm -hmm. um and that's just part of the technique that i've come you know fallen into over the years well this is a good segue into our first audience question so i'll stop our presentation here um one of our audience members asked if you could explain the process of how you paint a mural Gosh, that is really difficult to uh, to to do quickly. Maybe um, you can say, well, you know, we have uh, about ten minutes, eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, like that. So well, you can start with Kitty Castle, maybe how you came up with that. Okay, let's start with Kitty Castle. Um, well, let's just assume I've got the mural. So, the, so here I am. I'm sitting in front of the mural. We got to get started. Um, first, I look at the wall. What is it uh, made out of? In this case, it was brick. So with brick. I now know that I have a grid system already in place uh, because bricks are laid in such a way that they have to be level. And levelness is um, kind of just like an unspoken truth in art in anywhere. Anyone can see when something's not level. So when I'm given a grid like bricks, I want to pick a design that has a lot of level elements because uh, mm -hmm. it makes it go quicker. So when I saw that I had the bricks, I picked a design that had a lot of uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines, knowing that I could get those very easily without having to measure them. So in going through that, what items have those elements? There was also a telephone pole in front that had to be addressed, either ignored or gone around. And so I had to think of what themes might be able to incorporate a pole in the very middle of the building. So. I kind of went through a bunch of different ideas and finally a kitty castle kind of lent itself to it. Um, and I'm now realizing that I'm talking about how to decide what to paint. So there's, this is, there are so many levels to it. Um, okay. So now I've decided what to paint. Uh, then I'll do a sketch and I will put those big things on there. After that day is done, I'll do another sketch and try and accomplish that sketch. And then the next day I'll do another sketch and try and accomplish that sketch. And it kind of circles the drain over the course of a week. Um, that's the best I can explain because mm -hmm. you're constantly running into situations, whether um, the ground, all sorts of things, people. Uh, so you're kind of constantly bobbing and weaving to get this one project done. And it doesn't always end the way you, you wanted it to, as you started it. So being flexible and liquid and um, just kind of uh, don't get scared of being in the weeds is a big part of it. And that comes from just practice, I think. And if you make a mistake, you can you go over and make corrections? Oh, well, yeah, there's no erasing in, in murals. As far as I know, it's more, ah. you just cover it up. Um, and okay. that's a part of the, some color theory process. Like if I was to, um, you know, make a big mistake, I would paint on top of it to erase it. You know, I wouldn't wipe it down. Does that make sense? So yeah. and that's the other Absolutely. thing too, is you should never be afraid of messing up, especially in a mural. You're good. You, you can't mess up. Uh, <laughs> you just keep going, know. you know, I guess you could mess up, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we have other audience questions? Is there anybody who wants to talk 
uh, directly to Jessica or Nick. I think we have a raised hand. Um, Erica, can you unmute? Hi, I um, didn't actually have a question. I was just letting uh, the person doing the captions know that we could see them. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And uh, any other questions from our audience members? Jen, am I missing anyone? Eileen, we have a few that have come in through Q&A. OK. Um, let's see. We have an anonymous attendee asking, what gave you the idea to paint the pole in front of the mural wall? Um, well, that's a big part of, I think, most of my murals is incorporating its immediate environment. and. Uh, in my mind to have not addressed the pole would have split the mural in two, in twain, you know? So I, I kind of wanted to keep it one mural. And to do that, I had to, I had to paint it. You know, it, it, it wouldn't have been done without it in my mind kind of thing. And you painted it as a scratching post that was part yeah, of- Yeah, I got, and, you know, and part of picking the design was so that I could find a way to use that pole. Mm -hmm. I had toyed with the idea of totally just melting it into the mural, which which I did do, but it was also like a foot off the wall. So when you see it from different angles, it really does warp in a way. So it uh, it was just really in the way. It had to be painted, let's put it that yeah. way. Our fellow curator is asking, um, what do you do, to, and you kind of touched on this, what do you do to prepare in advance before you broach a mural project? A lot, yeah, a lot of thinking. Um, there's some sketching, but a lot of it is really just mind share. Uh, I don't really know what it is I physically do. I've caught myself sitting for hours, not doing anything, thinking about, you know, the mural, like how I'm going to do it, what time I have to wake up, you know, what, what I put in the car, you know, like getting, literally getting ready, where I might get coffee before. It's all these little things that um, goes into the day, because it's like a work day in which only half of it might be painting. So it's kind of just being prepared. Uh, and right now I'm lucky enough to have a, a handful of them under my belt that I know what most of them look like it'll take to get done. So now it's just a matter of being there, being on time, being rested, having you know everything kind of ready uh, and then addressing whatever problems I run into on that day. Cause there always is something. And actually, our um, my my fellow curator at the museum, Elizabeth Seaton, is also asking, "What kind of paints do you use?" I use uh, house paint, so like exterior house paint, um, and I'll use, excuse me, um, whatever's near, uh, but mostly Sherwin Williams stuff like that. Uh, Bear, you know, but yeah, the big buckets of of house paint. They're meant to be outside and weathered on and. Uh, only time will tell if, if I made the right choice. Right now they're all still up and they look fine. So right now I think that's the that's the best option. And I don't use oil base because I, I'm a little messy and I get it all over myself. So I don't use oil. Um, we have a question from uh, Rhiannon Engler. She says, what was your inspiration for incorporating dots into your design? Uh, the, I, I get that question a lot. Where do the, where do the dots come from? What do the dots you know mean and stuff? And I couldn't tell you a direct answer. It's really just it started stylistically, mm. and it was it was something I physically liked the look of. And before I knew it, I started doing it more and more and more and more. And then it started defining itself in my mind as to why I did it and why I liked it. But there was no one reason why I started doing it. I guess other than it, I thought it looked good and it kind of set me apart but also borrowed from some some pop some cartoons some surrealism mm -hmm. some pointillism so it, it, it borrowed from all these things that I've seen and and observed but it also had my it also felt like my thing so I kind of I must have just run with it without realizing it and now and now here I am I'm the doc guy you know so <laughs> I'll, I'll take it you know yeah our, um, our exhibition, one of our exhibition designers is in the audience, uh, Luke Dempsey, and he's asking, what is your ideal place to paint a mural? Uh, well, I guess there's a 
there's a couple ideals. There's ideal as in like, what is the easiest? What is the cushiest? And it would be uh, inside, flat, clean, primed wall, air conditioning, bathrooms really close, a good slop sink. Um, but as far as like my ideal place to paint for a finished product, those tend to be the more difficult ones because once they're done, it, it feels better. It looks better. It looks like it was harder to do. It looks more in, in the environment. So it really, de it really depends. Ideal is, uh, I, the, the ideal changes with each job, you know, mm. the least ideal ones are ones with difficult clients. And I don't actually have a lot of those. So, um, yeah, I know what my least ideal is, but most of them are pretty ideal, I guess. Um, I will, we'll end with some technical questions. Um, there's a question about um, how you, so you have your idea of what you're going to paint on the wall. How do you actually put the image on the wall, you know, being so big? Um, see, she, some people uh, make like a projection. What did you get? You get you close, do? then you get close, then you get far. You can walk close, then you walk away. You get close, you walk away. And after you, before you know it, you've learned how to translate paper to that. And um, I don't, I, it's some quote or anecdote that I had heard once that draw, it's not um, learning how to draw is easy. It's learning how to see that's very difficult. And so like, you can be looking at something you just can't get it on the paper, but you're looking at it. How hard is it to draw what you're looking at? It, the, the translation is difficult and that comes with practice. And so after a while, when I'm looking at my piece of paper, if I see that this is the box and the head needs to go here, I know where that is on the wall. I just, I, I just kind of know. And I think uh, having a lot of um, taking the fear out of it, knowing that I can't make a mistake, gets you gets you there faster. You know, because mm -hmm. what's really I think keeps people from starting is feeling like they get lost. Like I am, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, this looks terrible. You know. Uh, Murals are gonna don't look good until they're done, sort of, for the most part. So that's kind of like something you have to get used to. Um, so yeah, getting it up there really is. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but once you get your mindset, it's not it's not as hard as you'd think if you just keep going at it. Yeah. Okay. Last quick question: How many colors were did you use in Kitty Castle? Uh, I tend to only use uh, five or six. So I'd think about the same, and it's always um the two main colors in this case it was like a greenish and an orangish uh and then i'll have black and white and then one wild card in this case it was purple so with one two three four five i'm gonna say there were five colors in it and from those five colors i could get a, a, a rainbow within those well, a spectrum within those five colors great um, well, I think I need to end it. We're a little bit over time, so I'm sorry I can't get to the final question. Um, but I want to thank all of you for being here and thank you to our guest speakers. And um, just want to also mention that um, the Beach Museum of Art did um, commission a mural also um, in 2017. And that one is in Aggieville. So it's on um, seven... I think it's 711 North 11th Street. Um, and it's it's basically um, 11th Street and, and um, Larry, I think Larimer. So it's uh, by where the Bibimbap uh, Korean restaurant is. So if you haven't seen it yet, you know, you can go check that out. Um, in addition to um, the other murals that Inside MHK has, you know, organized. So we are, we are, you know, getting some public art up in Manhattan and thanks to Inside MHK, it's going to increase with time and we're very happy about that. So thank you very much, everybody. And um, I will say goodbye here and thank you for spending some time with us. <laughs>